December was the worst month of the year for Kia. The Lott family tried their best to create a Christmas mood for the girl. They decorated the house, baked gingerbread, sang carols. Kia, with eyes full of sadness, still believed in a miracle. She was waiting for Santa, but deep down she knew that the most important present would never come back. On the day when Nadine should have celebrated her 32nd birthday, Phoebe, her sister, posted video and different pictures with kind words in memory of her sister. At the end of the video, Kia sang a song dedicated to her beloved mother. For Claire, life without Nadine turned into endless torture. Nightmares, memories of the terrible day when they found the body. Daniel's name was forbidden in their house. David was also desperate. Christmas was overshadowed by grief. He did not stop talking about how much they all missed Nadine, her laughter, humor, and cheerfulness. On January 14, 2020, Daniel was to appear in the Lower Hill Court. Without leaving his cell, he joined the video call. His lawyer, Eamon Moore, demanded a psychiatric examination, which was approved by Judge David Kennedy. On the same day, Daniel was charged with murder. He pleaded guilty, claiming that he was intoxicated and did not realize what he was doing. According to him, on that fateful night, he used illegal substances, took two pills of unknown origin and drank 350 milliliters of rum. Daniel's trial took place at the criminal court building, chaired by Judge Michael Magrum. Seven men and five women were chosen as jury. Prosecutor John O'Kelly stated that he had incontrovertible evidence of Daniel's excessive cruelty he inflicted on Nadine. Claire, with the exception of two days when the jury was watching a video interview with Daniel, was present in the courtroom for all three weeks of the trial. She preferred to spend these two days at home with her granddaughter, Kia. Daniel never apologized to Claire and Nadine's family for what he did. Claire was disgusted. Daniel's demonstrative kisses with his mother before he was taken to the cell seemed fake and pretentious to her. During the testimony, a nurse from the intensive care unit shared horrifying details about Nadine's condition. Unrecognizable and mutilated. These words echoed in the hall, causing pain in Claire's soul. Dr. Linda spoke for two hours, describing every injury inflicted on Nadine. The family of the deceased relived this nightmare again, while Daniel stayed calm, as if it did not concern him at all. For David, Nadine's father, Daniel's refusal to admit his guilt was another blow. He saw it only as a confirmation of his sick, selfish thinking. There was no remorse, no sympathy for the family he caused so much pain to. Daniel was found guilty. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. But Irish law passed a more lenient sentence. 18 years for a life taken away, 12 more years, and this monster will be free again. This verdict did not suit David and Claire. Nadine's family could not accept the verdict. Claire was sure Daniel was hoping for leniency and for a quick release on parole. His cynical bravado did not disappear even in the face of the grief he caused. At Whitfield Prison, his safety was at risk. The cellmates were hungry for blood. Daniel was placed in an isolated cell away from his cellmates. One of the prisoners told that Daniel considered himself a victim of circumstances. It was the reason for Claire to appeal the verdict, reminding of the danger that Daniel posed to society. After that, he was transferred to the Midlands prison. Another inmate attacked Daniel in January 2023 at the Midlands prison. He was taken to the hospital and the attacker was arrested. According to rumors between the inmates, it was an attempt to redistribute power in the prison. Daniel had to spend several weeks in the hospital. There was a scar on his face forever, a terrible reminder of what he had done to Nadine. This is a tragic story about a 30-year-old woman who was murdered by her ex-partner. This case has created a buzz in Ireland and many countries abroad. It was another awful example of domestic violence that can have terrible consequences. Nadine Lott was born in Arklow, on the southeastern coast of Ireland in the late 80s. She was the firstborn in the family of Claire and David Lott. She had three younger brothers and three sisters, Phoebe, Tanith, and Kayla. In the summer of 2012, Nadine, a charismatic 26-year-old girl, was planning a trip to Australia. She had a long-awaited vacation full of adventures, sports, and new acquaintances ahead of her. 
Nadine has always been different from her peers. Her infectious laugh, bright smile, and charisma charmed everyone around her. She had many friends and was able to find an approach to everyone. Inside, Nadine was vulnerable and sensitive. She believed in people, trying to see only the good in them. She appreciated her family, which loved and supported her. In her youth, Nadine became interested in photography. She took photos of fleeting moments, trying to preserve the beauty of the world around her. This passion turned into a profession, and Nadine became a successful beautician, helping others to emphasize their beauty. In Nadine's personal life, everything was not always smooth. She was in no hurry to start a serious relationship, preferring to enjoy freedom and hanging out with her friends. And so, she flew to Australia. The hot air, the bright sea, the exotic landscapes, everything seemed new and romantic to Naden. There, on the other side of the world, Nadine met Daniel Murtaugh. Daniel was the exact opposite of Nadine. He was silent, modest, and with piercing eyes and a toned body, and immediately attracted her attention. They felt an inexplicable bond between them based on mutual interests and intimacy. The days spent together in Australia were filled with unforgettable moments and memories. They walked along beautiful beaches, dived into the clear water, and shared their dreams and secrets. Nadine watched Daniel surfing, conquering the waves. She saw admiration and tenderness in Daniel's eyes. He was charmed by her cheerfulness, sincerity, and infectious laughter. There were no barriers between them, and their feelings were getting stronger every day. Daniel was a couple of years older than Nadine and lived in Dakin, a suburb of Dublin. We don't know much about him. He worked as a window fitter and lived with his family on Melrose Avenue. Their affair with Nadine began quickly, but the girl herself described it as flirt without obligations. Nadine's younger sister Phoebe was the first to know about him, and then their mother Claire also found out. The mother immediately realized that this relationship did not promise anything serious. In June 2013, Nadine returned home with shocking news. She was pregnant with Daniel's baby. A few months later, he came to pick her up, and they even tried to start a proper family, but the relationship between them did not work out. In November 2013, Nadine gave birth to a daughter. She named her Kia. At this important moment of her life, it was not Daniel who was by her side, but her sister Phoebe. She held Nadine's hand during childbirth, took the first photo of mother and daughter together, and became a real guardian angel in the first and most difficult days of motherhood. Nadine's pregnancy was a turning point in her life. Despite the fact that the relationship with Daniel did not work out, she became a mother and found a new, important role in life. Phoebe's support was very important to her during this period. The case of Nadine Lott is a tragic story, but it also shows us love and support for loved ones. Nadine was disappointed. Her relationship with Daniel had brought her neither happiness nor love. Despite her lack of deep feelings for Daniel, Nadine wanted a good life for her daughter in a proper family. As time passed, Daniel showed no signs of wanting to be a father. He remained an irresponsible boy, stuck in his 30s, while Nadine tried her best to provide her daughter with everything she needed. In 2016, desperate to create a family, Nadine made one last attempt. She rented a house where they could all live together. But her hopes were ruined when Daniel never moved in with them. At that moment, Nadine realized that it was time to stop trying. Daniel's absence and silence did not overshadow her, but hurt her pride. Broken promises were her last straw. Although Nadine and Daniel had separated, she did not lose hope that Kia would be able to keep in touch with her father. But Claire, unlike Nadine, knew that Daniel wouldn't change. His only passion was boxing, and his family and daughter were not important to him. Despite all the difficulties, Nadine stayed strong. She continued to take care of Kia, giving her the love and support that she herself had not received from her father. And although her daughter grew up without a father, she had an example of a strong and ambitious mother who taught her to never give up. Claire suggested that Nadine go to Rome to celebrate her birthday there. The trip took place in October 2019. Arriving in Rome, 
Going out on the terrace and enjoying the air filled with the smell of coffee and fresh pastries, Nadine confessed to her mother that she was going through a difficult period of her life, as her relationship with Daniel did not lead to anything good. Nadine did not need him and was good at being a mother. She liked her job and her home and was proud of her achievements. Soon, Nadine was offered a job as a model. At that moment, she saw her future as promising and happy. Back in Ireland, Nadine was disappointed to learn that Daniel continued to make empty promises to visit Kia. One day, when Daniel was supposed to give Nadine money for their daughter, he asked for a meeting. Nadine immediately suspected that it was just an excuse to meet her, and not Kia, but she could not refuse. At the same time, Nadine did not want to ruin Daniel's image in Kia's eyes. She still had hope to create a real family, although it seemed more and more impossible every day. Coming up with new excuses for the absence of her father, Nadine tried to protect her baby from disappointment and pain. She didn't want her daughter to suffer from Daniel's irresponsibility and ignorance. Despite this, Daniel did not want to break up with Nadine and let her go, and was afraid that she might start dating other men. Because of this, Nadine was forced to hide her personal life from him in order to avoid his constant control and threats. By the end of 2019, Nadine Lott's life began to change. She left behind a relationship with Daniel Murtaugh. Nadine looked forward to the future with hope and started dating a guy from Turkey. However, her attempts to keep this relationship a secret from Daniel were in vain. He found out about her new partner and was angry and furious. Unable to come to terms with the loss of control over Nadine, Daniel began to stalk her, turning her life into a nightmare. On December 5th, tired of the constant threats and insults, Nadine texted Daniel. She made it clear to him that their relationship was over and demanded that the harassment stop. Nadine firmly believed that this would put an end to this exhausting and tiring relationship. On December 13th, Nadine asked Daniel to babysit Kia as she was going to celebrate her aunt's birthday at a local pub. They agreed that Daniel would stay with Kia at Nadine's house while she spent time with her family. Daniel and Nadine lived in different cities. Daniel lived in Clondalkin, and Nadine lived in Wicklow. On the night of December 14th, Daniel called Nadine several times at 057 and at 126 a.m., but there was no answer. He eventually sent her a message asking her to come back. Soon after, Nadine returned home. She quickly changed her clothes, but what happened next remains unclear. However, we know that Daniel attacked Nadine and scared her six-year-old daughter, Kia. One of the neighbors, Amela Kulenovich, heard the noise and screams, went to the house and saw the open door to Nadine's apartment with the light on and decided to check what was going on there. At the doorstep, she saw Nadine lying on the floor in the hallway and Daniel leaning over her with an expression full of rage and panic. Amila, trembling with horror, rushed back to her apartment. She immediately called Nadine's family to tell the truth. Claire, hearing the story, turned cold. A whirlwind of thoughts raced through her head. She had a bad feeling about it. What happened to Nadine? At this time, Daniel, vicious with rage, drove away from the crime scene in his Volvo, leaving behind a swirl of dust and the smell of blood. When scared Claire burst into Nadine's apartment, a terrible picture appeared before her. Blood splatters, like artist strokes, were on the walls of the hallway. The broken glass and mirrors were like blades, reflecting the horror of what had happened. But it was just the beginning. At 9.50 a.m., Claire, Phoebe, and Kyle entered the kitchen and let out an inhuman scream. Nadine's lifeless body lay before their eyes, all torn and lifeless. At the same moment, about 20 miles away from the scene, in the town of Larrick, Daniel crashed the car he was driving into a ditch. He got off with only scratches. John Becklin witnessed this terrible picture. Headlights, broken glass, a lone car lying in a ditch. His first thought was that a driver was drunk after the Christmas party. But as he got closer, John was surprised because the car was empty. Suddenly, Daniel came out of the fog. His eyes were blank, he was shaking, and his clothes were covered in blood. 
He confessed to the witness in a voice full of despair that he committed the crime. Soon, an ambulance took Daniel to the hospital. He didn't stop muttering that he loved Nadine, as if he was praying for forgiveness. At that time, Nadine's apartment was in chaos. Entering the doorway, four paramedics and two police officers felt the thick smell of blood. The walls and furniture were smeared in it. One of the paramedics, Ian Clark, was struck by the destruction in the apartment. Broken dishes, broken glass, bloody footprints. Everything proved that a brutal crime had happened there. Phoebe and Kyle tried to resuscitate Nadine, but their efforts were in vain. She was unconscious, and her body was completely unrecognizable. An ambulance took Nadine to St. Vincent's Hospital, where she was placed in the intensive care unit. At 10.58 a.m. doctors registered severe injuries to Nadine's head, neck, and chest. They were worried about her condition, especially after they found 64 injuries on her body, the origin of which remained unclear. Nadine received multiple blood transfusions, but her critical condition remained stable. Claire didn't give up. She stubbornly hoped that Nadine would come home. She remained in the hospital. Claire took some of Nadine and Kia's things with her, including photographs, perfumes, and toys, trying to surround Nadine with care and support. Although at that moment Claire had no idea what else she would have to face, she believed that all these little things would bring Nadine comfort when she came to her senses. Yes, it would be a long and painful journey. But Claire was ready to go through it with her daughter, despite the doctor's predictions. She believed that Nadine would survive, that love and care would help her overcome any difficulties. On December 16th, while Nadine was fighting for her life, Daniel was scheduled to appear in the court. The court decided to place him in custody pending further trials. That afternoon, Claire accompanied her daughter for a follow-up examination of the cerebral cortex. She prayed that Nadine would be able to find the strength to survive. Unfortunately, on December 17th, between 15, 16 o'clock, Nadine took her last breath without regaining consciousness. The most severe injuries were incompatible with life. The colonel of the Irish police, Declan McCarthy, called this violent crime one of the most brutal he has ever seen. Dr. Linda Mogan, the chief state pathologist, performed Nadine's autopsy at the city funeral home on December 18th. After that, Claire was left alone with many thoughts. She could not find an answer to her questions about the reasons for what happened. The next day, Daniel described the details of the attack on Nadine. He told about how he punched her and used the cord from the charger to strangle the woman. First, he grabbed Nadine and hit her on the head. Nadine tried to resist. Daniel continued to beat Nadine with his fists, kicked her, stabbed her, strangled her with a cord. Kia screamed, begging her father to stop and not hurt her, not to take her mother's life, but the girl's pleas were not heard. Nadine desperately resisted, but the man was stronger. Daniel continued the beating until morning. A funeral service was held for Lot on the 22nd of December at St. Mary and Peter's Church in Arklow in her hometown. More than a thousand people came to say goodbye to her. The church was packed, and several hundred people watched the ceremony via a live broadcast. Six people carefully carried the snow-white coffin in which young and beautiful Nadine lay as if she was asleep in the arms of eternal rest. Scarlet velvet roses, spread out in the last dance, surrounded the altar. Nadine's mother, Claire, was sitting in the front row, trying to hold back her tears. There was love and admiration for her daughter in her eyes. Nearby, relatives and friends were grieving, clutching handkerchiefs and not hiding their tears. David, Nadine's father, came to the altar with a tremor in his voice and tear-stained eyes full of sorrow. Carefully, as if afraid to break it, he placed one of Nadine's handbags next to the coffin elegant and charming, like Nadine herself. He remembered how she could turn any object into a fashion accessory that would emphasize her unique beauty. Kyle, a family friend, held the photo in his trembling hands. It showed Nadine and Kia beaming, and hugging like best friends. Kia, with eyes full of confusion and grief, clung to her mother's coffin, not realizing the whole tragedy. 
Nadine's sister Phoebe, barely holding back her sobs, brought a pair of shoes to the altar, the same ones Nadine was supposed to dance in at the prom. Tanith, a close friend, carefully placed a photo album that included priceless memories of carefree days, fun parties, and Nadine's bright smile, which will forever remain in their hearts. Priest Michael Moore, whose face expressed sincere empathy, began the ceremony. His words about eternal life and hope sounded like balm for the wounds of the mourners. He asked Nadine's friends to lead an honest and decent life to honor her memory. At the most touching moment, Priest Michael turned to little Kia and expressed his gratitude for the joy she gave Nadine and hope for her future to be filled with care and love. He promised that they would all be Kia's guardian angels, protecting her from bad things. Phoebe and Tanith, without holding back tears, said the last words, grieving the loss of their beloved sister. Their hearts were broken. The ceremony was over. To the sound of a funeral music, Nadine's coffin was buried in the San Gabriel Cemetery. Nadine's loved ones said goodbye to her, leaving her soul to rest in peace. In memory of Nadine and to help Kia, who was left without the support of her parents, the Nadine Lot Charity Fund was created.